When you are working on a product, the development cycle goes something like this. First, you write new code. Then, once it's finished and tested, you release the code to your customers. Once code is out in the world, it is called production code. In this video, you will learn a few general programming principles that will help you write production-ready code. As a new programmer, whenever you are faced with a problem to solve, it is tempting to start coding as fast as possible immediately. However, you should fight this urge and instead ask an important question. Has someone else solved this problem already? Although it sounds counterintuitive, your job as a software engineer is to write as little code as possible. If you are trying to solve a common problem, it is likely someone else has already solved it. And you should use their solution, so you can focus your efforts elsewhere. You should only start solving a problem once you've determined no one else has already addressed it. DRY is a programming principle that stands for Don't Repeat Yourself. When you are programming, you should not repeat the same or nearly the same code throughout your project. Instead, put the code into one function that can handle multiple situations. For example, this code uses three for loops to print different strings ten times. This program violates DRY because it repeats nearly identical code. The best way to fix this problem is to create a function that takes a string as a parameter and prints it 10 times. You can make your function even more robust by also accepting an integer as a parameter that determines the number of times the string prints. Orthogonality is another important programming principle. Two or more things are orthogonal if changes in one do not affect any of the others. For example, in a well-designed system, the database code will be orthogonal to the user interface. In other words, you can change the interface without affecting the database, and swap databases without changing the interface. You can put this into practice by remembering as much as possible that A should not affect B. If you have two modules, module A and module B, module A should not make changes in module B and vice versa. If you design a system where A affects B, which affects C, which affects D, things quickly spiral out of control, and the system becomes unmanageable. When you need to store a piece of data in a program, you should only store it in one location. For example, say you are using a string as some sort of secret key in your program. You should only represent the key in one variable. If you put the key in multiple different places throughout your program, and later you have to change the key, you will have to remember to change it everywhere. If you forget to change it in just one place, you will break your program. But if you always represent your data once, you know it is safe to change it. Every function you write should do one thing and one thing only. If you find your functions getting too long, ask yourself if it is accomplishing more than one task. Limiting functions to one task makes your code easier to read, because the name of your function will describe exactly what it does. Also, if your code isn't working, it will be easy to debug, because if a function breaks, you know exactly what it does and can quickly fix it. If you are programming and you think, I know there is a better way to do this, but I'm in the middle of coding and I don't want to stop and figure out how to do it better, don't keep coding. Stop and do it better. Taking the time to learn the conventions of a programming language will make your code more elegant and easier to manage. Python has a written set of guidelines called PEP8 and reading them will make you a better Python programmer. So far, you've been writing your programs in idle. At some point, you will want to switch to a more powerful interactive development environment, like PyCharm, the program you downloaded when you were building your web scraper. PyCharm has tabs, 
a feature that allows you to rewind the history of your program, built-in version control support, and a built-in debugger. A debugger allows you to go through your program line by line and check the values of variables at each stage of it. A good debugger makes finding errors in your programs significantly faster, and using an advanced IDE like PyCharm will make your life as a programmer easier. Logging means recording data when your software runs, and is another best practice. When something goes wrong in your program, you don't want it to go unnoticed. You should log information about what happened so you can review it later. Python comes with a powerful built-in logging module that you should start getting yourself familiar with. One of the biggest differences between average and great programmers is that great programmers write tests. Tests make sure your program works under many different conditions. You should consider every program you intend to put into production incomplete until you have written tests for it. As several famous programmers have said, untested code is broken code. Code reviews are scheduled sessions where another programmer reads your code and gives you feedback. Code reviews are important for all programmers, but they are especially crucial for self-taught programmers because there are so many mistakes you can make without realizing it. A good mentor will help you fix these mistakes and take your programming to the next level. If you can't find a mentor, you can do code reviews on the code review section of Stack Exchange, where you will find a community of people dedicated to helping each other improve as programmers through code reviews. The final best practice I will leave you with is always to be thinking about the security of your code. When you are programming, here are a few security tips to think about. Never use sudo from the command line, unless you have to, because if a hacker compromises your program, they will have root access. Many attacks rely on user input, so you should also always assume user input is malicious, and take steps to prevent it from harming your system. For example, never feed user input directly into your program. Always use a third-party library to cleanse the data first. Our final strategy for keeping your software secure is to minimize your attack surface, the different areas of your program where hackers could attack your system. You can minimize your attack surface by deleting code no longer in use, and also minimizing the number of third-party libraries you rely on.